Yo, 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 what is going on, guys? I'm excited right now. This is my first time live streaming, so, um, and I'm gonna be on a little weird angle. Uh, I gotta explain my setup a little bit, but what is going on, guys? Welcome to my first live stream on Daring the Dead of the channel. I'm really excited about this content. We're gonna talk about my past life, uh, playing college football, Division One college football, having full scholarships, and just going through camp and the whole life of being a scholarship student athlete in college prior to going to coding boot camp and learning how to code and just having a whole new career basically and i'm excited to introduce you guys to a good friend of mine and a co-worker as well um justin judd and he has been a developer longer than i have actually so Justin has about three, almost four years of experience as a professional developer, and we also went to the same boot camp, Grand Circus. So um, shout out to all my Grand Circus alumni, everybody who's been commenting from Grand Circus and subscribing. I really, really appreciate you guys. We have a really strong community here in Detroit and Michigan in our just tech scene for anybody who went to Grand Circus. So it's, it's really exciting to be able to introduce you guys to Justin, another alum of the bootcamp, so you can hear his experiences both as a professional developer and he also was a college athlete as well and I'm gonna let him, uh, he also played football as well and that's kind of one of the things we had in common when we first met. So I'm excited for you guys to meet him, kind of hear his story so you can hear his side of the corporate life and the at college athlete life and so we can kind of both tell our stories about how we transitioned from being those guys, the college, you know, athletes, jocks, all that good stuff and into tech and what we do now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call Justin on Skype and I'm going to bring him in on the call. And then we're going to go ahead and kick this live stream off, guys. So go ahead and kick back. You know, I hope you guys um, enjoy this conversation and Feel free to hop in the chat and let me know what you guys um, what you guys think. Let me know if you have any questions you want to get asked. I'll put them up on the screen. I'm also testing out this new software that I'm using for this particular broadcast too, guys. Um, it's called Ecamm Live. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna see how this goes. But I'm calling Justin right now, guys. We're gonna bring him in and uh, we're gonna get this thing going. Yo, 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 Justin, what's going on, man? How's it going, dude? Pretty good. Let me uh, let me get my mic screwed in here. Um, I can't see you yet, though. Yep, yep. Just getting it, just getting it flipped down here. Yep. There we go. No worries. All right. So let me let me bring you in as well. All right. Cool. There we go. So I believe we should be we should be all set, man. What is what's going on, Justin? Ah, uh, just another uh, Lions football Sunday here in the yeah in, in, in Detroit, you know. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> um, so I already, already kind of, already kind of warned the people up to you, man. I already kind of let them know um, a little bit about you that we went to the same boot camp and that you've been doing programming for a couple of years. But you know, um, go ahead and, and tell them a little bit about yourself, and we'll we'll just kind of go from there, man. Uh, I mean, yeah, I was uh, born and raised in Michigan. I uh, grew up like 20 minutes south of Detroit in the suburbs. Um, it was basically just a stereotypical jock through high school. I was uh, <laughs> pretty much, not pretty much, I was actually bigger than everybody, bigger, stronger, faster, that kind of thing, uh, which for a 16-year-old doesn't really help the, <laughs> e doesn't help the ego, you know, so I uh, thought I was, thought I was, uh, you know, God's gift to everything. Um, mm. Played hockey and football through high school. Um, went to college. Uh, played football in college as well. Uh, it was something I really wanted to do at the time. Looking back, I'm not so sure. Uh, I was probably I'm not so sure it was a great move, but um, played college. Uh, transferred uh, halfway through from uh, my original school in Ohio to back into Michigan. Yeah. Uh, so it was like two years D two, two years D three. Yeah. And then uh, went to grad school right away. Wanted to be a Spanish professor. Um, did that. 
So, so real quick, Justin, before you before you jump into um to like the actual the career stuff, like what you were focused on there, man. Um, on the football side, so so where so can you you want to talk about like where you where you played a little bit? Like what was that like? Kind of go into a little oh, more, yeah. more detail. Yeah, we can, about, uh, like, I just wasn't sure. Uh, no, no, yeah, how fast sorry. you wanted to go through it. So I mean, we can we can go we can go through slow through it too. Yeah, man. Let's um, let's know what that was like. Um, you know those those days doing camp in the in fall and. The requirements of being a student athlete in college, man, and balancing in school and in sports. Well, I mean, I'm not getting. A, I'm sitting here while they're talking on the NFL and everybody's talking about paying college football players, which which may or may not be the right thing to do. But I'm not going to see a check either way. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that's the kind of thing where it's like you go like now. I'm looking back on it. It was a great experience. Mm. Um, learned a lot. Uh, can't say that I'd do it again though, because I'm basically my body's just physically broken. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I mean, at the time it was like, you know, I'd like to think I, I could make different choices mm. uh, if I were to do it again. But um, knowing what I know about who I was and where I was coming from, I just don't really see it playing out any other way. Yeah. Um, because it is one of those things where you're 16, 17, 18 years old and everybody you've come in contact with um, in your up, like in your life up until that point, you're you're better at football than like yep. there's just no, um, you're just the best player on the field all the time. Like as a I was a fullback and middle linebacker. I, I played it probably like I was definitely six foot, but I, senior year I was like two thirty five. You know I, mm. I made varsity as a sophomore. Mm. Um, it's just one of those things where I was just good at it. I just had a nose for the football. Um, it just made sense. And, and really what it was is just kind of a release. You know, there's the whole yeah. go to school, do the homework, all that kind of, th- all that stuff. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I was raised right in that regard, but the, you, you know, Friday nights, you could turn that switch and just legally, legally oh, yeah. hurt, hurt people. You know? Oh yeah, man. Release, um, release a lot of, a lot of energy, a lot of, a lot of frustration, um, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever's going on, man. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't matter when you're on the field. And the um, schedule, the schedule and the, and, and the, the regimen is really what like, at least know from my parents' perspective, that's why they wanted me to do it. Mm. Um, uh, obviously, I was looking to do. Other, <laughs> I was looking for for other things out of it, but um, the the discipline, like the finishing something that you started, go, showing up to your commitments, like you know, mainly off season workouts, this that, and the other thing. I mean, that was all drilled into your brain from a young age, you know. So at any point in time, did you want to do, you know, did you think football was going to be a career for you? Like, did you, did you want to go the pro route? Because I know for me, man, that when I played, that was definitely the end goal for me. Was that? Yeah, 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 yeah for, for sure. I mean, like, yeah. it, it's, it's hard not to, I mean, it's like, I mean, with, with hockey, it's, it's you're out in your driveway, stick handling and shooting the puck around. Imagine that you're in game seven in the Stanley Cup finals, you know, mm-hmm. um, and football is no different. I mean, it's just one of those things. Uh, but the the reality of like once you step up beyond high school, the reality of football is completely different. Like the whole everything about it is different. And I remember people telling me that before I went into it, but it's just not something you know until you know it. I mean, mm-hmm. I could I could travel the country talking to eighteen year olds trying to advise them against playing football, but they're gonna do it anyway and then they'll agree with me, you know, ten years down the road when they can't jog anymore. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's yeah. not, it's not, it's not funny, but it, it's just, it's so real because, um, I know like for me, so, um, I, I played at Austin P state, Tennessee. Um, it's not something I really talked about on this channel before, but, uh, small one double a school, like 13,000 students and, uh, freshman year I went in and like right away in camp, man, um, tore both my MCLs. So Justin knows this already, but I'm kind of just reiterating for YouTube, but tore both my meniscus and both knees and like right away had to have surgery like my first two months of just being on campus and it was that's kind of where I realized like what you were just saying that it's not high school because um not only so like with the scholarship too man it was funny like I just didn't you your own your your like property so like I didn't even I remember not even getting the option to know that I was gonna have surgery or like whether I got an option to say no to the surgery it was just like trainer came in like hey man you got torn meniscus um and you're gonna have surgery monday morning and you will start rehab that afternoon and uh probably be out this long blah blah blah. rehab twice a day and that was just that so um that's where i realized that it was it was a different it was business you know what i mean it's like Mm -hmm. hey uh you you you're not producing right now we're gonna give you this red we're gonna give you this red shirt you know what i mean to get it together we're gonna get you the surgery to get you right but from there we need to see 
almost like double double the improvement, double yeah. the results. Like we like we want to see you bounce back from this because we haven't seen you prove anything yet. And this is like eighteen years old, two weeks, you know, just moving out of state for the first time. And just remember all that stuff, man. Not to mention my whole day from six a.m. it starting with training all the way to ten p.m. You yeah. know what I'm saying is is scheduled for me. You know what I mean. So. There, there is no time to even really do anything that you want to do outside of, unless football is what you want to do all the time, and that's yeah. all you care. You know what I mean? Like that is that that's what it is during camp for th- the whole thirty days. Um, so that's that's definitely where I got my my first dosage of like this is not what it used. It's not the same sport the that same, it used to be. Yeah, yeah it's not the same well, sport. That it and used I mean, to be. we're both from we're both from Michigan, so yeah. uh, and I imagine it was similar going down to Tennessee, but like. I played two years at the University of Finley in Ohio. It's a D2 school, Grand Valley, Saginaw Valley, those guys. Mm. Um, and they weren't, weren't very good, but, like, the, the level of play was just, like, holy shit, man. Mm. Like, w- day one, I get that. It's, I had no idea. Like, you can – a lot of people talk trash about the Michigan-Ohio State rivalry or whatever, like college football and all that. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's one thing, but the actual, like – I mean, lately it's not close in in the game capacity anyway. But like, even just terms of, in terms of like football producing talent, mm. the state of Ohio is just at a totally different level than. Oh Michigan. yeah, bro. So so it was like one of those things where I'm I'm leaving high school as 18 year old. I'm you know six foot two thirty five, um, running like a four nine something like that at the time. Um, decent squat numbers. Like bench was behind. My, my high school didn't have a very good. Uh, like weightlifting program or whatever. So I mm. spent spent the whole summer trying to get all those numbers up. Part of the reason, <laughs> part of the reason I went to uh, part of the reason I went to Finley was because they had a dedicated strength coach and 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 their own separate kind of weight room, and not all not all the other schools did. So I was recognizing that I was a little behind. It's like, all right, I need to get there. I'm gonna get mm. training and catch up kind of deal. Because despite working my ass off all summer, I show up on day one and there's there's running backs and corners that are you know. Five seven hundred and sixty five pounds that are benching four twenty five oh, yeah. and, run, and running four threes. Oh, yeah. And it's oh, yeah. like, wait a minute, what? And mm-hmm. and you know, mm-hmm. most people, if if you don't know about it, most people think guys that put up that those kind of numbers are just automatically go D one and end up in the league or whatever. But there's mm-hmm. a lot of people that are really really good, but they're but for whatever reason, it's usually like, grades, man. Grades, yeah, grades usually cause grades, people to go. That's, yeah, that's like maybe Absolutely. they just maybe they. Uh, Maybe they got hurt their senior year and a scholarship got pulled, or or they just went to a school where they were hurt or something and never got noticed. Or I mean, there's a thousand yeah. different reasons that that people can end up at like a D two, D three school, but it has no bearing on their athleticism. No, at not all. at all, not at all, not at all. Because um, life happens. Life happens to people, man. They they go places to be closer to home. Yeah. Like like I mean, dudes do things for all types of reasons. So yeah, there's there's talent everywhere. Yeah. So and that's and that's the thing. Getting there it was like holy shit like these these guys are really good you know mm-hmm. and i could hang with them i mean i hung i, I hung for two years you know first year got red shirted and then uh i started as um we ran like a three four and i was a, a walked up like outside linebacker mm-hmm. so it was basically it was a hybrid dn outside linebacker position and i started there and then because the school's just kind of a you know dumpster fire the uh mm-hmm. at least the program was at the time mm-hmm. That first off season, um, they didn't have enough bodies at, at D tackle, so they were looking at me. And after a, a, one off season of lifting, you know, I had bulked up quite a bit because, I, like I said, I was behind already. And uh, out of the freshman class that had come in, uh, and out of and the red shirts, I was the biggest one in that position in the DN position group mm. for my for my age. Mm. So they bumped me to the three technique, and I had to play fucking. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop that. I won't swear too much, but I had to. Uh, I had to play uh, D tackle for a while, just out of like organizational necessity. Mm. Yeah. And and now I'm playing D tackle against guards and centers. Like I've never played D tackle in my life. I'm six foot two. You know. 250 yeah you know like like no yep. business playing d tackle at that level and and yet like i'm doing it all the time so i mean it was it was a, it was hard i mean it was a hard thing yeah it's um, it's, diff- it's a lifestyle change too man so so can you talk about that so like so then so going back to what you were you were saying about uh majoring in spanish so you talk about kind of like balancing that lifestyle the whole college football thing with the the whole spanish and, and kind of just talk about that that experience too in the academic side yeah, so so I had more of like a. It, it's funny because um, 
like I went to a pretty good, pretty good uh, school. It mm-hmm. was a good public. It was a public school, but it was still a good, good school. And uh, I, I just, I had more or less like a. Uh, I mean, you know, the guys in high school that are training to go to the Marines or whatever, they have this kind of air about them where it's like, you know, they need to be at a, a cut above all the rest in order to get where they're trying to go. Mm-hmm. That's that's kind of the approach that I had with college football. It was like, uh, I don't need to be doing this. I don't need to be doing that. I'm training to be a college athlete, you know, mm-hmm. like that kind of that kind of attitude. Yep. Um, and and I knew school was important in terms of staying eligible. Yep. And and I was I, I got a good education, so it, it, but it was at the same time it was also second nature to me. So I didn't really like I, I took it for granted. Like, hey, I'm actually a pretty smart person and educated. So like, I didn't understand that not everybody gets that out of high school, you know, because I had no frame of reference. So so when I showed up um, on campus freshman year of college, I mean, I I mean we were covering stuff that I covered in like seventh grade. You know mm. what I mean? And like, mm. it was just like a, a huge, and that was with the regular students. That's not even like the football players and they're even, even worse. You know, mm. like they're, <laughs> I mean, just really yeah. dumb dudes in, in, yeah. in some cases. But like, I also didn't go to a culture like they have in Ohio. Now they, they basically told me like, Hey, um, you know, when cops catch us drinking, they just dump it out, take us home and make sure we're, we stay eligible for the next, for the next game, you know? Um, and that's not where I came from. Like where I came from was like you get in trouble drinking, you're in you're in a lot of trouble. And academics was expected as really well important. as as well as athletics. So I, when right. I got to college, the physical level of the players went up, uh, but I was ahead of the curve academically, which which I did not expect. I wasn't I wasn't ready for that mm-hmm. um, because my first two years essentially I didn't learn anything new other other than inside of this, uh, the Spanish major. Mm. Uh, Cause I got I got kicked out of Spanish class in high school because I me and my friends had too a little too much fun. <laughs> so all right, so you mentioned so you mentioned um like so you majored in Spanish, so what so so obviously Spanish did that did was there any sort of inkling that you would end up I mean in in tech or being a developer at this time like was there any okay so can you talk about like I guess what 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 was your career trajectory at this point right playing college football full-time student athlete in college uh studying spanish so like what what's justin thinking career wise at this time well when i was when i started going into college i was a communications major because i just knew i liked to run my mouth and and then i didn't (laughs) didn't have a problem speaking to people you know what i mean Mm -hmm. uh so it was like all right communications journalism kind of it was just kind of you know i'll pick communications because it's generic and then i'll figure it out and then uh I always wanted, like, I, I was really big into European history, and I, I had a AP European history class in, in high school that really turned me on to European history, so I wanted to do, like, something along those lines, but I, even though, you know, I graduated high school in 2006, and the, and the stereotype of, like, the, um, you know, like, the history major that can't do anything with his degree was, was, was there, mm-hmm. um, you know, like, so I was like, all right, I don't want to just be a history guy, I want to actually do something that's going to be relevant uh or at least get a skill that's going to be relevant and i looked at the i was like hey learn a second language would be cool and i saw the um like the projections of how the, how spanish was going to grow in the united states and this is me just at, at early on not really knowing anything about it um and basically what i ended up doing was just decided to be a uh, i was like hey being a being a teacher you know spanish teacher and high school football coach like that sounds pretty good i mean i'm from the midwest might as well might as well embrace it right mm. um and that's that was the decision to switch like over from communications. But at that point, I had every intent of of, of finishing uh, as a as a certified teacher at least uh, mm-hmm. in the in the state of Ohio. So the way they structured their program, it was it, I would have graduated with a double major, one in Spanish and one in in uh, in high school or secondary education. Um, but that because of football, that's not how it played out. Because after the second year, yeah. I was I was going into my third year. Um, Going into the third year, like so, the second spring ball, um, which is a just a nightmare. But um, I, I kind of had the full the the fullback spot locked up because I was playing D tackle. Uh, I was on the scout team that year, and the running back coach saw me run down a screen from like the D tackle spot, and he's like, "Hey, what what? I didn't I didn't know you could actually you could move." I was like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, I, yeah, I play. What do you think this is?" You know, what I mean? <laughs> and. Uh, so he actually was the one that asked me if I wanted to play fullback. I said, yeah, because I played it in high school. 
Uh, they didn't know I had hands either, so I got over there. I started catching footballs. And nobody knew what to do with themselves. Um, but the the next year came around. A new offensive coordinator came in. He had a couple of his uh, he had a couple of people that he had specifically recruited for his offense kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, it was just one of those things where I, I just got iced out. Like I wasn't even really given an opportunity to show what I could do in in camp. Mm-hmm. You know, I talked to the coaches a bunch of times. Hey, I'm trying to like I need you. At least got to give me an opportunity. I've earned that much. You know, you at least got to let me show you something. Mm-hmm. And that never really changed. So. Uh, eventually they're like, Oh, we just want you to focus on special teams. I was like, yeah, you know, up yours. Mm. And, uh, and I bounced and, uh, I ended up transferring in the middle of, of, of training camp, the third season. Mm. Uh, and I went to Adrian mm. and I played, t- I played two years there. So what happened was uh, to, to your question, like when I train, like, because the States States run their own academic, like education systems and then their like their accreditation and licensing and stuff. Mm. So when I transferred from Ohio to Michigan, I essentially lost all of my education credits, all the Spanish credits transferred and all the prereq and general education classes, they all transferred and the credits themselves transferred uh, from the education classes. So I still had overall count of credits, but mm. none of them counted towards a teaching degree in the state of Michigan. Mm. So what I had to do is choose between two extra years to get a teaching certification in Michigan or two extra years to get a master's degree in Michigan. And I, at that, at that time I was really into the literature that we were studying and stuff. So I decided to go get a master's in Spanish to, you know, be a, be a professor. And that's kind of how that, that's kind of how that all played out. Yeah. So that's, so that's crazy. Cause it, it sounds like technology's nowhere in the picture. Cause it wasn't for me either. So like, so I show up, so I show up 18 years old on campus, Clarksville, Tennessee, and they like sketch like sketch, schedule day or like picking your schedule day pops up we all have to go down there i got like a 30 minute block to like pick my my major (laughs) and my and like my first semester classes and i remember like um i didn't know what i wanted to do but the only thing i I could see myself doing was like film related stuff like i wanted to be involved with cameras or some sort of like film production i wanted to learn that stuff so like um i go in there and i'm like i remember looking for that but all they had is like a theater major like yeah. and, and i'm like okay well i'm not not feeling that so i did the same thing you would kind of like similar to what you did I, i'm like well i like i like communicating or talking or whatever i'm like hey i could see myself i like to write so i'm like hey i could see myself doing something in communications because it involves all those things whatever it sounds like it involves all those things so they had uh corporate communications was like was the name of the major and i remember just thinking like all right that's about as close as i think i'm gonna get to something that sounds doable like whatever just picked it out the out the blue, picked my schedule and just and just started, you know what I mean, going to class. But none of this stuff was was anything that I knew I would want to do for like I had no way of knowing if I actually wanted to do any of that, you nope. know, truly. So um, you know, classes ended up being useless. I mean, still to this day, my all those class I don't think I really learned much my that first year. And uh, that was my only year at college. So I, I technically have that one year as a reference. Um for anybody just on YouTube again, if you guys don't already know that that story i don't think i've shared much about it but i don't uh that was that was one and done that <laughs> one and done was me so uh in hey, college. Yeah, i mean we got both ends of the spectrum covered here yeah um because i <laughs> i went fucking six years and, yeah. and ended up in the exact same spot you know what i mean yeah so i so i i mean so i didn't take much out that first year still still don't think i did no, and, and they don't give you any more guidance than that i mean you get like you get someone assigned to you to make sure you have enough credits to graduate, to graduate. Within your major and stuff but nobody's really talking to you about like hey you, you sure you want to do this and not even be, like beyond that like all right this is what you're saying you want to do but let's just yeah. say for for you know hypothetically speaking that it doesn't work out mm. if it doesn't work out what are you going to do mm. and and nobody even asked me that question like i i that's yeah, exactly. My, it never even crossed my mind. Yeah, there's no finish line. Like you don't really know what the fin- the finish line is. Like graduation, but then what? It, like yep. like no one really is helping. It's like you oh, I'll that. figure it out. I'll have a degree. You know, hey, it'll be good. Exactly. I'll, I'll, it's just I'll yeah, it out. it'll work itself out. So yep. Um. So I. So yeah. So at. So at this time, man. Again, like no no tech was on the radar or anything yep. like that. So we were we were good. Like uh, again, I, like I went to a good school, so we had like. My, I was I was at least intermediate to advanced like Microsoft Office when I graduated high school. Like I could do anything on Excel, Word, PowerPoint, like all like all that stuff. So yep. 
uh, which again is just something you don't think people like from my perspective it was like i didn't realize that some people don't know how to do that yeah because it was just baked into how what i was taught you know what i mean so yep. and in all fairness if i have to disclose my actual first encounter with coding was i did have a high school class um that it, it made us build like uh, like simple web pages and uh but at the time i couldn't appreciate it there was no context to what I, like what we were doing so mm -hmm. the teacher i don't the teacher wasn't a, a developer like just to the best of my knowledge there's just no way she was actually a developer but like she knew enough and i mean now i'm looking back on it, it was super super basic this is probably like 2012 so like it was super basic html and i think it may have had css because i remember stuff having styling but like it was just those two things and it was just like straight up making h1 tags h2 paragraph tags like and building like simple web pages and you got graded based on like hey like make this paragraph this color and do this line like that's mm. your assessment so like i do remember that was my first exposure to like actually any sort of html coding but um i i like with no frame of reference that like this is a career and this is how like web pages are built and this is how everything works and this is how your phone works and like without yeah. that type of context it's hard to see the importance of it so that's so that's probably me at like 16 or something like that like 16 17 so then uh so then so then fa f like flash forward for me um after leaving college quitting football blah 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 uh and then coming home i started getting back into that because i was like all right well i had an app idea and i wanted to try to figure out how to how coding works so i went back to that because i was like okay well i remember this stuff from this class so I knew the basics of like H1s, H2s, paragraph tags, like simple stuff, a link tag, whatever. But then it was like, all right, how do I make something look actually good though, like a good website? So then I started doing free code camp and learning uh, Bootstrap, blah, blah, blah. But I was I was definitely limited to only front end stuff. So I started reaching out to like my friends who had like nonprofits or like small businesses they were trying to start or whatever. And just like, hey, I'll, I'll kind of make a site for you. I'll do it for free. Do you have a website right now? Whatever, using just taking Bootstrap code on online, customize like trying to customize it, colors, add their pictures in, whatever. But that was all I was doing was just straight up front end stuff, and, it, and, I, and I still wasn't at the point where I'm like, this is a career possibly. It was just right. more or less like I wanted to know so that I could figure out how to make my own app, and I wanted to just know how coding worked. But then I realized that front end was not going to get me there in terms of building some sort of app really so right so then I, that's where i realized like all right i got a lot more to go so i guess my next question is so like you're in this so so like you're you got the masters you got the degree in spanish um and you're you're kind of going down this teaching route it sounds like teaching and coaching route so at yeah. what point does tech kind of arrive on the scene as a viable <laughs> career option well, it was so my 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 um, entrance into tech was a lot like more abrupt. It didn't happen gradually like yours did. Like my my dad was like he like pirated movies and stuff and like got really good deals online and all that kind of stuff. So like I had some tech, but you got like I'm like what am I like six six or seven years older than you something like that. So like you got like I remember having a dial up connection in middle school. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So mm. like. It, it was even so basically like, cause to what you were saying, like it wasn't a valid career option. Like it was even more so for me because it was totally um, still coming into its own in terms of being mainstream, still kind of like it just wasn't even on, it wasn't really on anyone's radar, at least not that I knew anyway. Mm. Um, so basically what happened was uh, I, I taught for two years at, at two different community colleges and it I, I hate it i just hated it uh the i mean i wasn't very good at it either like mm. i was like I'm, I'm good at one on one teaching group teaching or or uh but like i guess the people the people don't matter it just it matters if the person that they're the people that i'm talking to want to learn the stuff mm. and the people that i was teaching didn't want to learn they were there for the prereq credits just give me my three credits so i can you know get my associate's degree bounce. or whatever um you know so most of them just sat there on their phone mm -hmm. and and just like had no idea what i was talking about and there was a mix of people that took four years of spanish in high school that knew everything already and then there were people that legitimately should never have made it to college in the first place like they <laughs> like you legitimately don't even understand what nouns and verbs are like i'm sorry that the public education system failed you so hard mm -hmm. but like i can't make up for 18 years of education that you didn't receive 
So like it, it ended up being like a really rough, rough spot because like I'm I'm coming out of grad school where we're reading all this like crazy literature and stuff, and I really like that. I really I mean I find it really interesting. There's like you know societal problems that you're trying to like tackle and stuff yeah. like that, but. Now you graduate and you get you go back to step one where you're teaching everybody the ABCs and the colors and shit. So, mm. like, I just didn't like that. I don't have the personality to get to make that exciting because mm. uh, for mm. me it's not exciting. It's just boring as hell. Like, all right, that's the fundamentals, <laughs> but let's get to the good shit. You yeah, know? yeah. Uh, so after two years, I just said, you know what, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try out and uh, I'm gonna head out to open waters and just see what I can do with this degree elsewhere. I'm like, there's Spanish. You know, Spanish is valuable in the workplace or whatever. So I thought. So uh, I left academia. I went out to Seattle for a summer looking for a job. One thing I could land was uh, basically a paper salesman for Dunder Mifflin. Basically, um, came home. I was ba- and, you know just tried tried a bunch of different jobs for probably two or three years. Uh, like, um, and the, the first inter- one of the jobs that I had was uh, running like sales for uh, like car dealerships. And they had a couple of email templates that were designed in HTML, so I saw how those worked. Um, but I was never allowed to touch or, or design them at all, so it's still vaguely on my radar. Um, and it took me just a couple – like I had to bounce through a couple jobs where it's like, all right, get my first paycheck. It's like do the math. All right, if I just do this for 20 years, I'm going to be 20 grand further in the hole than I am right now. So what's mm-hmm. the point? I'd rather, you know, I might as well just be homeless. I, like I'll have more mm-hmm. fun than, than mm-hmm. getting up and doing this every day. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just became, over time it became apparent. Luckily I had, uh, you know, supported my family and everything that like they were able to help help me you know, keep a roof over my head and stuff like that because it was not, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, without without that support group, like this story ends a lot a lot differently. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It would have been a, a lot lot darker. So mm-hmm. uh, I was I was fortunate to have that and, and uh, basically – just stay afloat long enough to 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 realize hey i need to add some skills like there's just no way around it um the degree that i have i don't want to take out any more loans and the the degree that i have is is not doing anything for me so i was all right gotta add add new skills my mom's been on me my entire life about being a lawyer basically so i was like all right time to let mom have her have her day and i was like all right screw it went and uh took the LSAT with every intent of, of going to law school, um, which is obviously counterintuitive to not taking out any more loans. I understand that. But <laughs> at the time, I didn't really have much of a choice. It was like, all right, I'll go to go to law school. I'll get it. I'll get it, get a degree, uh, go into like immigration law or something like that. Use Spanish that way. And then, you know, call the day and just start paying my loans back. Um, but when you take the law, the, the LSAT, you basically have to wait like, four to six weeks or something like that to get your uh, your test results. So mm. I studied, took the LSAT, and I was sitting there waiting for my test results. And it was like, all right, what if this, what if I don't get a good enough score to get a scholarship? What if, you know, so, okay, here's what it would cost. It's like, all right, well, that's terrible. So what if I, what if I don't get a good enough score to get in even? Like, what am I, what am I going to do? So I just spent some time, uh, I spent some time on the internet looking for, uh, careers that had, you know, upward trending tendencies, uh, stuff that I could see myself doing. Um, my friends and I had, had come with, come up with some ideas in the past where we just hit the wall of like, okay, this is an idea for an app, but like none of us know how to make the app. None of us have any money, so we can't make the app. So it's, <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like, oh, I got to learn how to make the app. If yeah, you man. Made, right? Right, yeah. So um, that's basically... I, I, I found I found Grand Circus online uh, just through research because I had seen it once. I was walking around downtown with some friends and I saw the like the sign on the physical building, and I was like, "Oh wow, that's interesting." Or whatever. So I, I I ended up stumbling across it again on the internet, and I started doing some research, and uh, and everything looked good. And I was sitting there like, "All right, waiting for my LSAT scores." I started doing some uh, some Code Academy exercises and stuff like that. I'm like, "Hey, this is actually like." just like Spanish grammar, this actually like translates pretty easy. Like, Oh, this isn't so bad. And, uh, and just through, through pure happenstance, like, uh, my mom was getting a car and she needed to lift up to the dealership. So I took her up there and I was just, I was helping her just sitting there getting a car with my mom. And, uh, it was with a guy that I knew from high school. Uh, he was helping us out and, uh, his cousin also needed a car on that day. Right. So Mm. they all show up at the dealership. And his dad, uh, Jimmy is his name. His dad, who's like a Ford Ford executive, 
uh, was with him as well. And he asked me how things were going. I'm like, oh, you know, still just trying to figure everything out. I got, you know, teaching wasn't for me. Here's where I'm at. I just took the LSAT. I'm looking to do, uh, uh, I'm trying to decide between that and, and programming. There's this boot camp downtown or whatever. He's like, he said to me, he's like, 100% do the programming. He's like, don't even, don't waste your time going to law school. And I asked him, like, why? And he's like, from my perspective, uh, mm. every time we post a lawyer job, there's three applicants sitting in the lobby within, you know, four hours waiting to apply for it. He's like, but every time we post uh, three developer jobs, we can only fill one of them. Mm. And and it was just like, oh, wow, you know, hey, this guy, you know, I've known this guy since I was a kid. You know, I trust his opinion. He's obviously done pretty well for himself. So it's like, okay, this there might be something here. And that ended up being what turned the tide. And, you know, I, I had applied and got accepted to Grand Circus, but that ended up being what decided, you know, made my decision to, uh, to, to do it. Yeah. That's, that's pretty big, man. Um, like, like the fact that he, you know, sometimes when you have a big decision like that, people are kind of like wishy-washy about kind of pointing you one direction or another, but for him to just be like, no, forget the lawyer thing definitely forget go that. do that yep. and then and then and then <laughs> and then like just to, just just to know where that led and just where, what that means now is just is wild that moment oh, it's incredible yeah and, and and really but like how do you go about replicating that like hey if you want to tell people to like do the same thing it's like i ran into a family friend at the right time at the right place and and i just talked to him and had a conversation and it ended up swaying my mind you know like my decision so yeah uh, it's it's really one of those weird you know destiny mm -hmm. kind of look no nah, i mean absolutely yeah. man because uh so for me how i got how i ended up at grand circus which by the way again for reference anybody who's joining on the stream or doesn't know uh background grand circus here in michigan is a uh, code and boot camp in detroit it's like the most popular one um probably the one that has the most alumni that are just everywhere all throughout the developer workforce in michigan in general um so justin and i both went there and so the, how i ended up there was um so I had been going to a lot of startup events at Grand Circus um, since I came home in like 2015 or 2014 from school. It was 2014. So um, so I had been going to like pitch competitions there and, they, and just like meetup events. Like all these things were usually held at Grand Circus or they always had a bunch of things there. And then, I would, and then I found out what it was by talking to students there or just hearing the name around town. And then I started like, once you know what it is, then you start kind of noticing more things about it. So I started running into more people who had on like Grand Circus like swag or people who uh, were developers or said they were going to Grand Circus, they were students. So that's how I kind of started getting interested in it. And then I think 2017 was my first time actually applying and so in Detroit, they have these scholarships uh, for Detroit residents trying to help bridge the minority gap in getting into tech and, and, and stuff like that, specifically software development. So at the, every year, Grand Circus partners with like a company or two or whatever, and these companies sponsor X number of scholarships for people. So in 2017, it was like Facebook that was, uh, that was sponsoring like a, like a tech hire um, scholarship for X amount of people that lived in Detroit. And there was a process you had to go through to like be eligible to get that. So long story short, um, I found out about it because I was unemployed at the time. And it was just like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to just find find a better path myself. And I really wanted to learn how to back end program. Like I was already I felt OK about websites, but I wanted to do make something. So like um, so found out about it, went through the process, went to like the unemployment place, had to fill out the paperwork, take a prerequisite test just to make sure that like you know math and that you can read, stuff like that, go through that stuff, whatever. Then I had to go interview, do a couple interviews at Grand Circus. And, um, and then at the time they had a different interview process where like you interviewed and then you had to go do a live session. So it was basically like a, like a, like one day of actual boot camp, but they did it to they did it as part of the interview. So like you went in with a bunch of other students and you guys would go through a lesson together basically and it's like whoever they they monitor how well you keep up or help other people, how you communicate, like all this stuff. And at the time, um I just wasn't good on the soft skill side. Like I was trying to prove that I already knew a little bit about coding and I wasn't like really helping other people and doing stuff like that. So 
I think that probably has something to do with it, but basically I didn't get in. So 2017 was the first time I tried to go through this process, get the scholarship, because I, I didn't want to, like you said, I gave up a scholarship, so I didn't want to go get into debt when I just gave up my opportunity to go to school for free. So I was like, okay, I don't want to go get new debt. So I was determined that if I couldn't go for free or get a scholarship, I wasn't going to do it. So in 2017, I didn't get in, man, and it pissed me off because, like, it, I mean, it was, it's what I wanted really, really bad. It was, like, this dream of mine. So, like, the next year rolls around, and, um, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm not even in Michigan at the time. And basically I get an email from Grand Circus, um, just like a, like a marketing email about the upcoming scholarship for this year and whatever, and just went through it, applied, did the pre-work, like all this stuff and ended up getting offered, um, the scholarship. So like that's ended up how, how mine ended up happening the second time around. But like you said, it felt like a destiny, like a fate thing where like the first time, you know, I really, really wanted it, blah, blah, and I didn't get it, and it, like, upset me, and then that led me to go work, you know, dead-end jobs for, like, two years after that, or not two years, maybe, like, a, like a year of just bouncing between kind of, like, low-paying, dead-end jobs for that year Um, once I didn't get in the first time, but then the second time, 2018, it's, like, destiny had its way, and, like, I was able to go, and I was like, hey, man, I was unemployed for those three months, so... You know, I'm packing a lunch every day, taking it to Grand Circus. I didn't really have, like, too much bread to, like, buy food every day. But it is it is what it was. I was like, hey, at the end of this three months, I'm going to soak up as much as I can. And, like, I'm going I'm to hit the ground running and, and try to do this this thing as a, as a real developer. Because people, you know, everybody was saying that once you go through this boot camp, their lives were changing. They're getting these these big salaries that at the time yeah. seemed like huge numbers that you've never imagined yourself being able yeah. to make because you don't have the skills. So, like, that's all I was focusing on from day one is, like, I'm just going to bite down, do whatever for this three months, and, like, I'm going to yeah. get that job, whatever it takes. That's crazy because they didn't do that. Like, my interview process was just one interview, and that was it. Like, they and there was, like, a exercise or whatever, but that was it. Like, they didn't have that extra class session. So, mm-hmm. it's interesting because they added that later. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you're talking, like, the testimonials alone, I was like, all right, look at the career projection. It's holy crap. This is awesome. And the only people that I knew that were even scratching, like even coming close to the amount of money that they were saying people were making are the ones that work at Quicken Loans. And and they were they were working at Quicken 85, 90 hours a week, you know, chained to their desk, just phone farm. And it's like, I don't. I don't want to do that, man. Like I, I that, I'm, I'd be terrible at that. It's the most soul crushing stuff I can even think it's of. It's bad, yeah, man. I've so. Seen- uh yeah that that got me into boot camp that got me into code and then um and then uh that's where like the rest the rest is history i suppose like that's yeah so so now so now we're kind of jumping into the boot camp phase of the story so so once you got to boot camp uh what what did you which boot camp did you take right so uh so we have front end there's front end back end there's java c sharp so like which which boot camp did you go through i did the the, the back end java yeah. Um, but again, like knowing what I know now, that's not the one that I would have picked because, you know, it's just kind of funny. You go through and like see what the course offerings are and then you got to go through and look each language up individually to figure out what the hell they even are. You know, yep. like, oh, what is what is all right, what's the difference between front end and back end? Like, yep. all right, what is this? What does this mean? OK, what does that yep. mean? You know, and I didn't even fully understand the implications of the decision to do the Java back end camp yep. uh, boot camp. But I just I knew I needed to do something and I knew I figured, hey. I don't really fully understand the difference between front end and back end, but I know learning one of them gets me closer to the other. So let's do it. Yep. Like, yep. Absolutely. Let's go. Man. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have a choice. So the, the scholarship only allowed for the Java, it only covered the Java bootcamp. So I wasn't tripping. Mm. I was just like, yo, whatever, man, they say you learn one, you learn them yeah. all. Let's do it. Whatever. Yeah, and so. Java, the numbers, like if you do like outside looking in research on Java is pretty promising because of how widely used it is. Mm. So it's like one of those things. All right, everybody's using this shit. Let's, let's just do it that so way. Let's then. Just do let's it. play the odds. Yeah. So, yep. So, um, and so then, so, okay, so you take the Java boot camp. So, yeah. so from there, uh, what was that experience like? Like going through the boot camp, no experience prior, right? Like mm-hmm. 10 weeks, something like that. So, uh, what, like, what was that like? Is it, is it, you know, you know, actual languages, you know, Spanish, you know, English. So, like, how does that translate? How, like, what's it like going from, you know, start to finish through the boot camp? Honestly, man, I, I, I struggled. I struggled. Like I did not really have a very a positive. There was a bunch of reasons, but like I, I did not really have a good or positive boot camp experience at all. Like it, it was, there was, it, yeah. I mean, from the initial assignment to, to the, the instructor, to the, the people running the thing, like I, I don't really have, like that's, 
it's part of the reason why I don't really go back. I don't do any of the alumni stuff. I don't do any of that stuff because I, I honestly I didn't really have that good of, good of a time. Good, and it's not about just having fun. I mean, like I, I they, they gave me a, like it was rough. It was a rough time. Um, yeah. So the the first part of it was good. Um, it was you know just learning, drinking through fire hose, just learning, following along. That's fine. Uh, but there was a moment where the 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 guy running the course wanted us to learn the difference between the eclipse um ide and then the eclipse enterprise edition ide so he had us install that as well as the uh, the um so we had two versions of eclipse on our computer basically and we're all bringing our computers from home and mine wasn't super beefed up or anything like that it's just what I had. I didn't have money to go. I spent all money going to Grand Circus. I didn't have money to go buy another computer, you know. Yeah. So uh, Eclipse just straight up ate my computer. I mean, as soon as we downloaded that second one, even uninstalling it and trying, like it was just from that point on, my computer was just really struggling. Uh, and then it eventually led to me just getting behind on the material because I couldn't follow along anymore. So you know, everybody else is following along, following along, taking notes, and like I'm the little little engine that could, you know, bring it up to caboose, trying to figure out like, hey, what did he say? He's on these three slides ahead of where I'm at. Like I'm trying to remember what he was just saying and stuff, and and eventually they just got so far ahead uh, from where I actually was, it was just like, all right, fuck it, I don't know, I'm just gonna hang out. Like I, I'm gonna hang out and learn as much as I can because obviously following along isn't really getting me anywhere. Um, and it was a lot. It was. It was about that time where I actually got I got in trouble. Uh, <laughs> this is the dumbest situation ever, but it's it's a little more on the social front. Long story short, I said the word chick in class, and the teacher flipped out on me about it um, because he, you know, said I was being I was degrading women, and and like I took offense to that because I really wasn't. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the intent at all. I was like honestly, I just thought chick was the female equivalent of dude like i don't i don't i'm like honestly out of all the options i could have went with this one's pretty pretty neutral and, and mm. you know and i was legitimately confused i went on facebook that night i'm like hey everybody like is this offensive like i had no idea this was even a thing you know and mm. it actually really irritated me uh because i was like we don't need to go too far into it but they were basically treating me like the the racist uncle at thanksgiving you know, where it's mm. like, hey, you're you're accusing me of all these things. Like, I'm I didn't do any of those things, in my opinion. Like, I, I'm mm. not like, it, like, well, it's a little dismissive and blah blah blah. It's like it was a minor detail of a story. Like, it was an episode of Silicon Valley is what I was referring to, and like, it was there was just a joke about the the um, civil war between people that use the uh, tabs versus spaces. Mm. That's it. It was just a joke about that, and like the teacher, all he said was like, hey, this is this is actually a really serious thing. And I, in class, as part of the conversation, I was like, yeah, there's even an episode in Silicon Valley where the main character breaks up with some chick because she uses spaces instead of tab. And he's just like, hey, boom, he flips out. Hey, we need to keep it. We need to keep keep it. Uh, you know, I know we're trying to keep it playful here, but, uh, you know, we got to respect women. And I'm like, I'm sitting there like, what What are you talking about? I, don't, like, I mean, yeah, I agree with that, obviously, you know. So then we had, had to have a meeting with the meeting people and stuff. But from that point forward, I – Needless to say, I was a little salty with with them in general because it was like, I, you know, you people are insane as far as I'm concerned. But like, um, so in addition to that, plus uh, falling behind with the Eclipse, like we went into our final project where I, I legitimately uh, wrote in like the we did our last like test before final the final project, and I didn't know the answer to like any of the questions. There was like maybe a handful of them that I knew. And then it just got to the point where at the very bottom of the test, I just wrote out a paragraph like, hey, I don't want to do this. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what this is. Like, I think it's unfair for you to put me on a team of other people that are going to be building this project. I'd rather just have my own thing and work on my own speed because I, I, like, I'm not at the level of some of these people. I just don't get what I'm supposed to be doing. And I need to until I catch up, I can't contribute to a team like this. And they had a little powwow or whatever. And they maybe go on the project team anyway. So, that, you know, that's that that is what it is. Now, the reason I was checked out, though, was because uh, they have people come in, like they have companies come in and talk to you. Like, I mean, I'm sure there were a couple that you saw yeah. as well. And one of them was a security, a, a cybersecurity company that came through and talked to us. And like they started explaining what they do and stuff. And then I started reading about that a little bit. And it was just like, hell yeah, that, that sounds awesome. This is like super important. Like, 
um, you know, people are hacking elections and stuff, you know, like, yeah, let's, I can get, I could be one of the good guys, you know, and, and part of it was because of football. It was like, this is very adversarial, you know, red team versus blue team. So it like, it just made like a little more sense to me right up front. Like, Hey, I don't have to worry about learning the business. I, all I know is I'm on the good team. I need to keep the bad guys out. That sounds good to me. And I had every intent of going into cybersecurity. So I was kind of checked out of the, of the app dev side. I was, I was studying, I was working with a mentor at their company at the same time. I was learning like networking fundamentals. I was learning all the stuff that I was going to need to get into cybersecurity. So by the end of my the boot camp, it was kind of like, hey man, app dev can kind of, you know, can kind of shove it. I don't really care. Like, I don't like you guys. This stuff's questionable at best, and and that's just kind of it, you know. Yeah. Um, that got us into our final project. We finished our final project, gave a presentation, and uh, and I haven't been back since. Yeah. Um, what um, what do you remember? What you built for your final project? Yeah, it was uh, well, we tried to build it. Um, uh, team was just kind of a dumpster fire. The the um. We were trying to build like a, a real time like social app for uh, for like what's happening at a particular bar. So we, we just came up with a couple of codes for like if you're sitting at a bar and it's all dudes like eggplant emoji or whatever. You know what I mean? It was just basically like it had like a rating for like, hey, if I'm looking to go somewhere, I can pull this app up and see what the current like status of those places are it's like oh well there's just mm. a bunch of dudes here oh it looks like a good time over here this that and the mm. other thing that, mm. that's what we were trying to build but we had this dude from the old country man like this his name i forget his name but he he was basically an ex-cosmonaut dude that was on our team and like i didn't know what was going on so i, I was wasn't very helpful uh and this guy was going home and cowboy coding the whole project himself at night so he'd like he'd talk to us. We we'd be like, all right, here's the plan. He'd go at home. He'd go home and do it a totally different way. Come back the next day. Hey guys, here we go. I got it. And it's like, no, no, it's like, dude, this isn't what we talked about at all. You know. So <laughs> it, 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 quick, it quickly kind of it quickly fell apart. And oh, uh, man, that's it was rough. just kind of really simple, basic app that really wasn't worth much of anything. And uh, you know, we gave our gave our little presentation at the end, and, and we're on our way. You know. Yeah. So then, so then after. Uh, you graduate what what's the um, like what is it like you know trying to job hunt get that you know get interviews and technical interview first te- first real technical interview where you actually got to apply the stuff you learned at coding boot camp and not in front of your instructor in front of some real like people to yep. do this so well, what was that kind of uh, like that's where like i said i was planning on going into security so i was working with this with this company that visited us uh in boot camp, I, I had been working with them since the middle of boot camp. So I, I immediately, once boot camp was over, I immediately started working with them more. I had uh, my mentor, and they were getting ready to go go to some of their meetups, and they had like a capture the flag thing getting coming up, and I was prepping to go go do all that stuff. Um, and basically, uh, I was looking for credentials, like some online credentials that I could do. I ended up getting get trying to get one that was just way over my head in terms of. Of, of knowledge like I, I signed up for it and that was the end of it but um yeah so i ended, i made it to like the interviews that they had for that thing um for the security company and it, it was a very similar program to what we hired into at at our current job uh where they bring you in they train you up for a couple months and then and then uh and you work for them for whatever but this place actually had like a contract that says hey you will work for us for two years if you don't, then you owe us like 15 grand for the training. Mm. And it was like, it was like, I, I mean, yeah, this is fine. You know, like, and at the time I would have still done it. Uh, but actually my, my buddy, uh, a friend from my boot camp, uh, had just recently interviewed with United Shore and gotten a job at United Shore. And he was basically like, Hey man, they're just trying to fill out this class. Like they're trying to bring in as many people in one big batch as they can and fill it out, train them all up. So he's like, you should apply. And he told me a little bit about the job and stuff. I was like, all right, whatever. I threw threw an application in, and and I was mid interview process with the security company when when uh, I got an interview with United Shore, and limped limped through the phone the phone screen because uh, mm. I hadn't been thinking about that stuff. So it was like the guy in the interview was asking me like just some basic just basic shit, and I I knew enough of like I knew enough about it for him to know that I had heard those words before. Mm. But but beyond that, it was just, I just hacked my way through it. It was it was brutal. So then we go to the the coding interview, or the actual in person, 
and all they asked were crazy hypotheticals. They didn't ask for any, like, I didn't have to code anything. It was just all visual because they're trying to bring in junior developers, and it was a very low bar uh, to get in. Yeah. And so, so in a lot of ways, I'm lucky because they've it made it harder since. And if I would have had to go through the latest version, I wouldn't. Have, I just straight up wouldn't have got in. Mm. So I got in though, and lucky enough, and and uh, they they offered they offered it to me. It was paying like fifteen twenty grand more than what the security job was going to pay. Plus, there was no guarantee. There was no firm like two year commitment or anything like that. So exactly. Yeah. I, I got in. Got into United Shore. Went in. Trained. Trained. Did the three month training program. Uh, and then uh, got placed on the floor, and uh, and I've been there ever since. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so speaking of that, getting placed on the floor and everything. So what were your first? What was your first role as a? Uh, once you got hired as a professional developer, and then some of the responsibilities, if you can talk about that, they like came with that role a little bit, like what you did, what you were expected to, to know to do. Yeah. So they tried to they tried to make the um, the training program like a little little too theoretical it's really what ended up happening because we ended up this three months we had to build out this like project or whatever and it's just a bunch of rookies in there just trying to build a project so we were making just all the all the stereotypical mistakes didn't have a ton of uh, guidance nobody really had the resources to help us in that regard infrastructure wise was a mess like there, there were a lot and like they've like I said they've gotten better since but um we essentially were in like a three-month bubble where we were just building this project and ours the team that I was on was basically just a spaghetti monster of jQuery, and which was I didn't know jQuery before that, so I learned that, which was cool. But um, n- not very much of what we did applied to anything that was going on on the floor. So then three months of training is over. We get placed on, and I got placed on Risk, um, your current team, uh, right out of right out of DevX, and. Uh, there was me and one other person from the from the boot camp as well, or not the boot camp, the the training program, which I didn't really do that great in either. To if I'm being honest, like I, it was it was just one of those things where it was kind of a shit show, and I had no idea what I was doing. I was just limp. I was just kind of skating through, really. Um, then we got placed on a team, me and one other guy from DevX or the training program, uh, and we were placed behind two senior devs. Um, that that you now know and that are very very talented <laughs> very talented individuals so it's me and me and this other new guy and we were basically just shadowing these these other two you know seniors basic senior developers um and just straight up trying to keep up like just just trying to keep up with them like just trying to like all right what's he doing uh why why is he doing this what's going on here and, and they were they were they were understanding i mean they're really nice people so they they gave us like little tiny things to work on at a time. Like here's what you know how to do this, that, and the other thing. But uh, that only lasted for about six, seven months um, because due to growth, company brought in a, a new AVP or VP or whatever. And this guy had the brilliant idea of of building out a tier three arm of, of app support, um, which – is basically like it's kind of like triage in the in like hospitals. You got like help desk people call, try to resolve things. If they can't, they pass it off to the second tier, who researches like the business process. And if the business process can't figure it out, and they determine that it's a problem with the software, they pass it to tier three, who then develops the bugs. And it sounds great in theory. They were totally unprepared to make that change. They didn't support it with enough resources. I mean, it was just a total disaster, at least from my perspective anyway. But we all got myself and probably 12 other, give or take, 12 other developers that were also from our our, uh, training class all got drafted essentially and sent into and and, and to make up this tier three. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I was there for about a year Mm -hmm. um, on on app support, Um, which was good. It was like... As opposed to like so, risk it was very narrow focused. I was on a project team that was very focused on one area of the code base. App support was good because I got to see the wide view of everything and mm-hmm. understand what this was, why this is there, what's this doing. But I didn't really have a deep understanding of anything. It was just how things are are related, which was good. But it would have been good to get you know maybe like six months or so in and then bounce, but um, at least to another team. But uh, but I didn't stay there for a year and then really ended up the whole infrastructure of the team was was basically collapsing all around us and it just turned into a big joke yeah uh, and, and i spent a lot of time not really 
not really learning things, at least from a professional sense. Like it was at that time is when I mm-hmm. started studying on my own, you know, similar to what uh, you and I have been doing, but not, mm-hmm. not anywhere close to the, to the right level. Like I would go to work, I would say I'm working on this thing, and then I would just sit there and read articles about stuff that I didn't understand trying to address my, my learning gaps. The gaps, yeah. Yeah, and, and – uh, but the reality is nobody even cared. It wasn't even like a like it wasn't like a hey he's not producing or anything like that. They just they didn't have enough oversight to even know that. Like I, I was, you know, because I would just go there, I'd sit down and I'd, I'd put my head down and I'd start working. I was coding little side projects and stuff, just trying to learn and, and trying to do things. Mm. And then yeah, obviously I did some I did some bugs and stuff as they come up. But half the bugs we did as part of the team would just get closed out due to user error. They just made it through the process incorrectly. And it was like, oh, well, the business changed. Or, oh, hey, this other project team already fixed that indirectly, so don't even worry about it. It's like, all right, well, I just spent two months working on this thing, but mm. cool. So it ended That's up wild. being a really frustrating situation. Yeah, and that I, is. That's pretty I, crazy. I, <clears throat> I basically it got to a point where I had to call. I, had, I did like a skip level meeting you know, with my boss's boss kind of deal. And was just like, look, you need to get me off this team right now. This is absolutely unacceptable. This is what, let me list you all the reasons why I just went off basically. And he was actually like, wow, hey, I didn't know this. I didn't know this was going on. Thanks for your feedback, yada, yada. Uh, and then the next day I was on the, I was back on the risk team because there was an opening. Yeah, you mentioned when you first got to the team, you had like two senior guys um, like they're with you on the team and it was you and like one other person from the from your training program. So what was it like coming fresh out of boot camp and not having a CS degree in, uh, or a computer science degree and then working with guys that were, you know, that insanely good senior developers? Like what, what was that kind of relationship like? Uh, well, I mean, like interpersonally, they were fine because they, they were really nice. You know what I mean? So, like, there were some other people that I know that got placed on teams with people that were a little more rigid, that were a little more vocal about them not mm. doing things, or there were more interpersonal conflicts and stuff. So these guys were really laid back and friendly, which was nice. Uh, there was an initial, like, non-computer science related. There was an initial blast of mortgage knowledge that I needed to get up to speed on because all that's all the terminology of all the different things that you're doing exactly, so until yeah. until you understand that like the basic mortgage mortgage training wasn't enough to really to get, an get understanding. you there yeah right so there was that paired with the technical stuff and and that's where they they did a good job of keeping it bite-sized for us uh keeping it in our wheelhouse like this is how like hey we'll build out all the infrastructure you guys do with the views or whatever like you guys deal with the jquery make this button do this thing and ask us you know let us know if you have any questions or whatever so Mm. in terms of the transition it wasn't that bad because uh because of the team that i went on but uh at the same time we weren't actually taught how to do anything we were basically just using what we already had learned on our own and then uh kind of basically just copying everyone like copying what was already there like hey i need mm. to add an extra option to this thing therefore i'm gonna go find all the other options copy one of them and then repurpose it mm. um there wasn't a, there wasn't a lot of new code being written it was just repurposing old code and and, and just copying other examples of things yeah. that already work so i was i started getting more productive but my proficiency wasn't going any it yeah, wasn't exactly. going up you know and there's a big difference between productivity and proficiency so yeah. um it wasn't bad, but it was one of those things where I knew th- there's a difference between imposter syndrome and just straight up knowing you don't know enough. Mm. Like, so it's not like, you know, I mean, yeah, you got to be weary of imposter syndrome, but it's like, no, I'm, I'm just not that good at, at, at these things. So I need exactly. to study these yeah, things. And yeah, that's kind of yeah. what I tried focusing on to try to, uh, to compensate for mm. the, for the lack of a CS degree. Mm. And, and the main way I did that was through books. Like I'm academic background. I, mm. I like reading books and the one for C sharp in particular, uh, cause that's the other thing that I didn't even mention the, the boot camp was in Java, but, but the place we work now is, is, is a, is a dot net shop. So we had to switch over to C sharp and mm. there's a, uh, player it's called player's guide player's guide to C sharp, whatever, basically just explains the language, like a, like a video game manual kind of deal. And that actually made a lot of sense to me, uh, which helps. And then there's another one called the imposters handbook that's online that helped explain a lot of the computer science stuff, uh, in a, in a plain English, easy to understand kind of way. And that, that mm-hmm. helped, um, didn't help me learn everything perfectly, but it, 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 it at least helped, uh, demystify some of these things. Cause a lot of the stuff that you learn, it just sounds super intimidating at first, and then once you actually know what it is, it's like, oh, wow, that's 
it's not even that bad. Yeah. Um, so we uh we're, we're ju- we just pushed over the the hour mark. So I got two more questions for you. Um, final two before we wrap up. Um, last one related to you know current job or where you've been. Um, so if you can, so I guess maybe also just uh you know speak to how long you've been there, but also in the during the time you've been there, um what has been your work-life balance you know what i mean like do you usually take work home with you are you expected to work late nights weekends or like what is it what have you seen as you've kind of grown at the company over the you know the time you've been there yeah so uh the company itself is is going through a lot of really rapid growth so the company has doubled twice since i've been there in three you know over three years um and it's really from what i've witnessed it's really hard to do things do that the right way without a lot of stuff Mm -hmm. falling through the cracks so I picked up a lot of bad habits based on reading, um, hey, this is how everybody else is doing it, and you get to work, and they're doing it in a totally separate way, and it creates this conflict where it's like, all right, I know this is the wrong way to do it, but I need to do it in order to keep my job, but at the same time, it's negatively impacting my career uh, in terms of like what I know how to do and whatnot. So um, the first year or so was, a, was mainly just drinking out of a fire hose, just trying to figure out what everything was. Uh, and then year, year and a half till now has been like more like refinement of, of skills. It's like, all right, I have an idea of what the things are high level of what I need to know. Now I got to dig in and get into the, the nitty gritty of the, of understanding. Yeah. Um, and, and really, but as you know, uh, we, you know, I was on the team when I went back to the risk team, they had already switched to this proprietary framework that we were using mm-hmm. that the company built, in, you know, internally. And basically the nine, 10 people that were involved in building the thing quit, left, didn't have, leave any documentation. And now basically everybody on the floor didn't even know how to do, how to use, like yep. they know how to use it, but they don't know what the thing does. Right. No. So, um, basically what it translated to was like, Hey, like me saying to myself, like, all right, I, I'm thinking I need to get out of here to, to, in order to grow my skills. Uh, but I'm working on a team now where I'm only using this internal thing and it's not really helping me grow my skills uh, for life after here. So this, this speaks to your work life balance question where it's basically like, what did I ever take work home? Absolutely not. We're salaried employees. They, they as far as I'm concerned, they take advantage of the extra hours and time that people are willing to put in on their own. Mm-hmm. But I, I that was just absolutely unacceptable in my opinion. And I will, I, I leave at 40 hours and I will not take anything else home because we don't see any additional compensation. Mm-hmm. And it, that might seem kind of, harsh or whatever but like they're they're experiencing like explosive growth they're buying up buildings around like they're they're spending money on stuff they're just choosing not to take care of their employees so like Mm -hmm. that that's where i'm at on that so i would never take work home Mm -hmm. in terms of their work but i would i've absolutely been just just developing as much as i can get my hands on uh in my own time on my Mm -hmm. own things Mm -hmm. um so I haven't had a very good work-life balance. It's been primarily work because I've got an eight-hour roadblock every day in 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 my current job. So I got to go do that, just deal with all that nonsense, and then come home and put another four hours in of what I'm trying to um, what I'm trying to actually learn. Mm. Uh, and that's that's tough for a lot of reasons. One, just straight up energy, have mm. being able to maintain that kind of pace. Yeah. Two you're kind of on your own where you got to like figure out what's marketable. What do you want to do? There's, there's a lot of, um, if you don't stay disciplined and learn the one thing you can, it's easy to get distracted and start spreading your time about, around a bunch of different technologies and not really get anywhere in one of them. Right. Um, but I've been, I've just out of necessity in order to stay relevant on the job search, uh, which I've been doing actively now for probably a year, year and a half. I've had no choice but to come home and put in an extra four hours because, mm-hmm. you know, I've gone to interviews and they're asking me these questions. And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. But from their perspective, um, I'm, I've got, you know, anywhere from one and a half to three years experience of .NET development um, on my resume. So I should know these things. So they're asking me these questions and I don't know them because I'm not using them, um, which is understandable from both sides, really, when you think about it. So it's like, all right, I got to I got to. I got to add, I, again, it's kind of like why I got into tech. It's like, I need to add skills. I need to add more, like yeah. in order for me to get where I'm trying to go. And, and like, I, I need to, I need to, I need to know more. And unfortunately, um, you know, health and social life and that kind of stuff had to, had to be put on the back burner in order to achieve it because of, of how dense 
the 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 subject matter is. I mean, it just it just is what it is. You can't you can't really there's th- there's things you can do to speed up learning, but but at the end of the day, you can't really learn this stuff fast. Mm. Um, yeah, or in a, in a pinch, really. I mean, it's not it, that's just not how it works. Yeah, and it also goes back to kind of like the athletic the athletic background and things, kind of helping with that because it comes to putting in overtime or like staying staying late to get in some like extra conditioning in the summer or yep. staying after a weight session, um, work on something you know you need to work on. Like it's, it's the same mentality of like overtime to get, you know, whatever yep. the result is you want. So, well, and, and I look at like, I'm, you know, I'm 31 now. And like, I look at all my uh, friends and people that I know and stuff like that. Thanks to, you know, Facebook, I can keep tabs on everybody, you know, whoop de doo But, mm-hmm. uh, the one thing when I look at like the people who I truly respect and people that I've in my view are, are successful. Um, the thing they share in common is that they just straight up outwork people. They just outwork them. And that's the one thing from sports that you can take from that. Cause there's a lot of people that I used to, that I knew that were really smart that haven't done shit. They, they right. really haven't done anything, but then they, they had net, like the intelligence was there. Absolutely. Uh, but less intelligent people have just straight up outworked them. Uh, yeah. and, and have since passed them up. So mm-hmm. um, I used to be one of the people that just thought like, hey, I'm smart. Like I, I'll, I'll, whatever comes my way, I'll figure it out mm-hmm. uh, and just kind of coasted. Mm-hmm. But uh, what this has taught me, it's like, no, no, you need to look at look at what the people that are succeeding are doing and it's yeah. it, they're putting in the time. That's what they're doing and there's just no shortcut. There's just absolutely no shortcut for, for, uh, for improvement. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta put the time in yourself, you know. Yeah, I think that's great advice, man. And um, last question I got for you before we get out of here is uh, career growth and kind of your outlook on that and your plans going forward. So I guess like, what's what's the next steps career wise for you, or like, where do you see yourself kind of falling within? There's just such a big spectrum of stuff in the tech world yeah. to, to get into. So like, what's what's next for you? Well, first, my first goal every day is to not just straight up lose my shit every time I walk into my job because they're because of how. <laughs> because of how crazy these people are like, i just got to get out of there right so <laughs> the main keeping my sh- holding holding my shit together is one is goal number one every day but uh i'm trying to get out of michigan as well i've just kind of I've lived here my entire life i've seen some other places studied abroad in spain as part of my education so I, I know that there's better ways or other ways to do things um i got an opportunity to move in with a friend out in tulsa uh there's there's some job openings out that way uh, one of the big reasons I got into tech as well was because of the ability to work remotely, uh, kind of like what we're doing right now. It's like there's no need for us. To, like I could be on the other side of the world and it wouldn't even matter, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so pursuing like remote work, pursuing freelance work, pursuing the, all those kind of things is kind of where my head's at right now because I've seen all I need to really see of like ultra big corporations. I just don't, I don't think I'm really a good culture fit for uh, for that. Yeah, uh, and I want to get into, get into that. a role yeah. that'll allow me to wear more hats, basically. Yeah. Um, now, what that translates to on the tech side is probably um, uh, less .dot net um, because .dot net's super heavy tailored to to enterprise stuff. Probably more uh, more JavaScript, Ruby on Rails, something like that, Python, um, and then a lot of the infrastructural stuff, CI tools uh, like you know um, server stuff, Docker, um, mm. AWS, all this cloud stuff. And I'll probably look at like a some type of certification or something to add to it, whether it be AWS or, or anything like that. Um, the other thing um, I've been having, a, I had to start working on a mobile project at work. Uh, and from what I'm learning about that, there's a lot of expected growth on the mobile front too. Mm. So I'm going to, that's always uh, the way I kind of see that is, is like, Hey, I'll, I'll have a day job and then I can build mobile apps on the side for some extra scratch. Mm. Um, and that's just kind of where my head's at right now. But mm. it, it, just like everything else, it, it, it changes fast. So who knows? We'll mm. we'll see. Right now, goals goals is to get out of Michigan and then uh, and then see where we see where we go from there. Uh, hopefully, I can do do so without taking a step back professionally. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, as long as soon as I get this job out of my way and I can spend eight hours a day getting better at the stuff that I want to be getting better at, um, it's going to be a, a significant upgrade. Uh, yeah. And and long term, it's going to end up uh, compensating me more anyway. Yeah. Well, for sure, man. Um, I appreciate you for taking the time on a Sunday to just, you know, kind of go through some of this stuff, uh, talk about our background, your background a little bit and just uh, some of this experience. I I feel like a lot of people can um, hopefully pull some some value out of what we what we were saying and kind of some of your story. 
some of your background relating to you know a lot of people go to college and don't end up working in whatever they they studied yep. so um most people yep. so yeah man I, I just appreciate the honesty appreciate you coming on and taking this time out to share with me man and um yeah guys this won't be your last time seeing justin for sure uh we have a lot of things we can talk about uh relate to a lot of content coming out in the future so so yeah until next time um staring you know during the dev um boy justin thanks again man i'll talk to you in a little bit peace all right see you guys